So, hello friends. So, I'll be giving you a brief overview on this uh, antibiotic which came few years ago. Uh, for whatever reason, I had not covered this. So, this is a combination of three important elements, uh, which is septraxone, sunbactam and disodium editate. So, it's available from whatever I am aware as one brand called Delorus. Uh, so, the composition is ceftraxone, which I'm sure most of the listeners would be using it regularly, is 1 gram. Sulbactam is 500 milligrams. So, I'll have to uh, make a, a sort of a claim that sulbactam of 500 milligram is a very suboptimal dose uh, if you are looking at the positioning of sulbactam as an antibiotic for resistant acinetobacter. If you look at IDSA guidelines, sulbactam is one of the drugs that needs to be positioned at the forefront uh, for treatment of acinetobacter and it's at a very high dose. We give 3 grams 6 hourly. So that's the sort of dose. But 500 milligram as an adjunct to ceftraxone, how much it would be effective, uh, I think one has to ponder about. And then it has around uh, 37.5 milligram of disodium editate. So we will call it as a short form CSC, ceftraxone, sulbactam, and EDTA. So CSC. So just talk about uh, why this is an interesting molecule that is coming to market and uh, whether we can position this at all. So the whole reason this possible molecule has come in is because of the resistance pattern. So why does resistance happen? So if you look at this, these are all these pouring channels and then there is this efflux pumps. Then there is a plasmid mediated resistance and this is the cell membrane. So in the cell membrane, the resistance is conferred by these pouring channels which get ineffective and then these efflux pumps which get activated and there is a throwing out of the drug and the plasmid mediated resistance. So what does this combination of CSC does? Uh, it basically increases the membrane porosity so that the effective antibiotic gets into the cell and kills the cell. And it reduces the uh, efflux pump overexpression. So efflux pumps are one of the reasons for antimicrobial resistance because once the antibiotic enters the cells, these efflux pumps throw these antibiotics out of the cell, making it ineffective. So this particular CSC, which is ceftraxone and sulbactam EDTA, is shown to is hypothesized to reduce efflux pumps over expression. And this particular drug uh, sort of mitigates or inhibits the plasmid mediated resi resistance by preventing this plasmid transfer. And it also has an effect in downregulating the production of beta lactamase. So these are the four sort of a variables on which this particular combination is hypothesized to be effective. So increasing the membrane porosity, reducing the efflux pumps overexpression and plasmid transfer inhibition and down, down regulating the production of beta lactamase. So this is the sort of mechanism of action. So just for all our intensive care friends, when you look at the mechanisms of antibiotic resistance, broadly it could be looked into natural resistance and acquired resistance. When you look at acquired, so there are two broad categories. One is genetically mediated, which could be chromosomal or extra chromosomal. But what is of interest and modifiable? So obviously genetic, you cannot modify. So the biochemical mechanisms which possibly could be modified is where due to limited uptake of this anti antibiotic by the cells and modification of the target set. So these are some of the mechanisms by which an organism or a cell develops resistance to the antibiotic where there is modification of the target site and there is an inappropriate sort of an entry of these uh, molecules and, uh, and then there is this efflux pumps. So these are some of the mechanisms for conferring the antimicrobial resistance. So when you look at EDTA, uh, it is touted. So the component EDTA, which is a one of the ingredients in this CSC is shown to be a resistance breaker, potentiator, and it is acts as an adjuvant. And it is also shown EDTA is a variable which helps the antibiotic to penetrate the biofilm that tends to get uh, formed with some of these resistant organisms. And EDTA also inhibits the efflux mechanisms or the throwing out of the antibiotic within the cell. So these are some of the mechanisms in which the addition of EDTA to this combination helps in mitigating the resistance. And when you look at antimicrobial 
resistance breaker is classified into two types. Class 1 is its ability to reduce the MIC and class 2 helps in host defense mechanism by modifying the enzyme inhibitor and by facilitating or enhancing, enhancing the membrane entry of the molecule. So, these are the two ways with, by which uh, this uh, sort of anti antibiotic resistance breaker is found to be hypothesized, like it reduces the MIC and then it modifies the enzyme inhibitor and helps in penetration of this antimicrobial into the cell membrane. And uh, EDTA is also, so this is little interesting friends, just pay attention. So EDTA, as you know, is a chelating agent. So we need uh, zinc and calcium as a uh, as the agents as the molecules to strengthen the cell membrane so this particular drug by chelating the calcium and magnesium so these these calcium and magnesium are not made available for strengthening the cell membrane uh, and this efflux pump uh, inhibition happens by chelation of zinc ions and magnesium ions so just pay attention to this so this is a cell membrane so polysaccharide cell membrane the strength of this polysaccharide cell membrane is by these bonds formed by the positively charged and the negatively charged sort of a molecule. So, the strength of the cell membrane in a bacteria is by the strengthening of these bonds formed by the positive and negatively charged molecules. And these positively charged molecules are calcium and magnesium. So, the presence of this helps in stabilizes the cell wall. So, EDTA removes this calcium or the positively charged ions so that the strengthening of the cell membrane does not happen because of its chelating effect and then this membrane integrity is not strengthened or maintained. So, this is the way this particular combination is hypothesized to be potent in mitigating the resistance. So, this particular molecule was launched as Elodus which is a combination of ceftriaxone sulbactam and as I have already mentioned. Now, sulbactam at a dose of 500 mg, one has to ponder whether it remains effective. Not in 2013, not an approval from DCGI. So, the way this molecule is positioned is in complicated urinary tract infections and in sepsis, uh, which is possibly caused by MDR organisms, where the results may not have come out and you are suspecting a MDR organism. So, it is found to be effective against ESBL and metallobita lactamases. And it is looked at as positioned as a carbapenem sparing sort of a drug. So, what is the evidence? So, if you look into Google and look into evidence, the evidence, you don't get a big randomized control trials of this molecule uh, comparing to carbapenems. But, so, but you would find uh, sort of a case series and a few retrospective sort of a studies. So, two studies which you could possibly cite for the usage of this drug and all these come from India only. So, this is a retrospective study published in 2015 where they looked at the usage of the ceftriaxone sulbactam EDTA. They found there was 83.3% clinical cure rate in MDR sepsis in this particular retrospective study. There is one randomized control trial worth knowing for the audience, which was a double blind randomized control trial where they compared uh, this ceftriaxone sulbactam EDTA versus meropenem in complicated UTI published in 2019 and they found that this uh, ceftriaxone sulbactam EDTA was non-inferior uh, with a comparison as you see 95.9% response rate as compared to 89.9% in meropenem. So, it was found to be non-inferior. So, these are the only two studies that possibly you can cite as a justification for usage in position mainly in complicated UTI, it is effective against ESPLs as a carbapenem sparer and it is found to be safe and tolerable and uh, it is shown to be effective against acinetobacter but I would wish to exercise caution because if you look at IDSA guidelines for acinetobacter bacteremia, the type of sulbactam dose is needed is very high, 3 grams, 6 to 8 hourly is what but this contains only 500 milligram and if you give Two times a day, you are only giving one gram sulbactam. So, I would be skeptical in using it against acinetobacter, shown to be effective against pseudomonas and enterobacter species. So, as I said, it is positioned as an alternative to carbapenem. So, that is all we have about this drug. So, uh, from whatever I am aware, there is only one company which produces this, and uh, you can possibly use it as a de escalatory drug and as a carbapenem sparer. 
especially in ESBLs, but I wouldn't be considering it uh, to use it uh, for acinetobacter because you need a higher sulbactam. And uh, the mechanism of action is mainly, uh, uh, as you said, in reducing the uh, expression of uh, efflux pumps and plasmid transfer and down regulation of beta lactamases and increasing the porosity. So these are the four mechanisms. And most other mechanisms are attributed to EDTA, which chelates calcium and magnesium, which are needed to strengthen the cell membrane by bonding with the negatively charged particles because of its chelating effect. So if you remember this much, that should be good enough about this particular molecule. And it could be positioned against sort of moderately complicated UTI and as a de-escalatory drug to carbapenem. So that's about it, friends. So request you all to submit your valuable work to General of Acute Care. And you can visit my website to re to this lecture. Thank you. Thank you, one and all.